keep feeling like I've forgotten something. No backpacks, no luggage, no seatbelt. <laughs> been too long since I've been on the AJP. Yeah, g'day guys, Steve here from Netbike ADV. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon, it's been a fairly busy weekend. Um, we're getting lots done. So I thought, oh well, we better just get the AJP out for a quick run. And I thought to myself, I actually haven't done a full uh, sort of, well as formal as I get, a formal review. So an SPR, a short practical review. I don't like to give super technical details, all that stuff's available on the internet, but I like to give my opinions on the bike, so I call them SPR, short practical reviews. So I'm going to go for a squirt, I'm going to clear my head, clear the cobwebs out of the old AJP PR7, and, um, and have a chat. We've done this before, haven't we? Cracking day, I'll get lost up in the bush somewhere. Probably just go and do a couple of tracks I know and have a bit of a wander around to see who's floating about and have a little chat chat. It's slippery there. Been down here for ages. Not for a long time. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful little spot. <laughs> yeah, g'day guys. Steve here from Dirt Bike ADV again. As discussed, I've come out to the bush, I've found a nice little spot here, I come down to this spot and just have a look at the river sometimes, beautiful just uh, a little bit of uh, tranquility so to speak out in the bush, but as I said we well, thought we'd better have a chat about the AJP PR7 and uh, my thoughts and uh, do a short practical review as I like to say in SPR. So this is a 2017 um, AJP PR7. AJP are a Portuguese manufacturer. Obviously they build these bikes, all the components, the frame, everything. Get the wheels built, all that sort of stuff. And it's just the old BMW Husqvarna engine. 600cc single double overhead cam. Um, it's a very well built bike and I'm very pleased with it. And it's a long term keeper for me. 
Um, what I like about the bike probably the most is its ability to, to tour. Um, it's got the wheelbase compared to, it's about 30 or 40 mil longer than the 690s and the DR650s. Um, so it's a very good touring bike. If you wanted to take it in single trail, it would be slower steering, but that's not, not what I'm aiming to do with the bike. So this is one of the first um, of the uh, AJP Power 7s brought out. It was brought out here in 2017 um, by AJP and um, released onto the market. Um, what they did to this bike, they found, like Beta, the fork anodising let go. They replaced the forks free of charge um, as under warranty, so that was good. They also remapped the first that one of this is one of the first three bikes, and they remapped them slightly. Not a big change apparently, but they just remapped them to make them easier to start. What they've also done now too is put a bigger battery in. They're supplying. I've ordered a cradle for a a. Um, uh, a bigger battery so same battery just just bigger they've really tr tried to work on keeping the weight down with these bikes so um yeah a slightly longer wheelbase so it's a very much a touring bike um and it's a very comfortable deep foam seat um 17 liters of juice uh it's got full 48 mil suspension on the front all adjustable comes standard with an isus tablet um and the tower and everything you see there it's obviously got the original um beam uh husqvarna speedo there and and uh, a proper ignition key and all that sort of stuff so it is quite well set up for um for touring and adventure work air box is up here that's the air filter under underneath there so nice high air tank air intake i should say absolutely bloody brilliant that's the black part down there is the tank 17 liters um, all the electrics are under the seat you just that's a key removal for the seat so um, a very good bike to work on um, you can see the starter motor right there uh, no pulling the engine out to get to the starter motor like some of the kdms water pumps right there and of course um, the spark plugs right there so very easy bike to work on very easy bike to uncork and and get to so yeah uh, you know it's it's a real pleasure to uh to take it anywhere you, you're not worried about drowning it you're not worried about anything i know with the kdm sorry the tenere 700s it's, i think it's 22 bolts to get the, <laughs> to get to the spark plug before you undo the spark plug and very similar i think with a with a kdm 690 um so in comparing them to competitors there's two competitors to this bike 69701 and the dr650 obviously the um, 69701 if you're into your high tech and your, your your full power and your full noise bikes definitely the bike for you and if you like it even more simpler you got the dr650 obviously no longer in production unfortunately but um, they're an even simpler bike you know carby uh, just an oil cooler no radiators and you got the ajp sitting smack bang in the middle fuel injected bike with cool uh, liquid cooling um so yeah it's still pretty mo hot, uh, modern high-tech sort of bike so yeah a um, couple of things um wheelbase on a 690 is is 1505 the wheelbase on a dr650 is 1490 the wheelbase on this is 1540 so a considerably longer wheelbase so probably not quite as versatile as the other two 650 and the in the, the 690s and that the steering's not as quick uh, it's a little bit slower to react and that sort of stuff but the advantage is and this is why i like it uh, for touring it's absolutely brilliant don't need steering stabilizers absolutely absolutely Beautiful. brilliant um, oh, both the dr and the 69701 have about um uh, th 260 to 270 uh ground clearance this has 310 mil ground clearance um the dr has a 43 mil front fork these have a 48 mil front fork same as the um same as the 69701s so full um sort of uh, fully adjustable suspension the one thing i'll say about this compared to the 690 obviously with a with a dr650 you're going to have to spend money on the suspension there's no ifs or buts about it um, and certainly the one i rode had 1800 dollars spent on the suspension and uh, it was uh, it was really good once they'd spent that sort of money the 690 i had the 2018 690 the suspension was stock uh, it was fine but it was very harsh it was very firm and very harsh obviously handled the the faster um, race pace so to speak uh, no problems at all um, whereas the ajp here is very plush very soft and very plush so it doesn't handle race pace at all but it does uh, handle the chatter and the corrugations very very well so it's designed to be a touring bike and with the longer wheelbase 
I think that's where AJP aimed, uh, aimed, uh, aimed the product more as a touring slash adventure as opposed to an adventure bike slash touring. So, yeah. Now, of course, the elephant in the room, of course, is the weight. Okay, so if we start with a, um, uh, the weight of this with about 300k range, sort of set up like it is. It didn't have the crash bars on it, admittedly. It was low 170s. The 690, a 2018 690 with a tower on it, with a screen on it, um, and a rear rack and uh, the 5 litre tank, that came in at the 160s. I believe the later models are a little bit hurl uh, a little bit heavier. I think they're coming in, they'll probably come in at the high 160s. So... 160s for the 69701, um, 170s for this. The um, DR650 I rode recently. Uh, that that with all the gear on it, and again a fair a, a fair amount of juice, so enough to do 300 k's. Again, uh, this is only rough guys. Come in in the low 180s. Um, a 701 with an Amiga kit, uh, 28 litre tank um, with sort of um, uh, you know uh, GPSs and, and racks and uh, uh, um, pannier racks and all that sort of stuff. So really geared up for long travel. Uh, Brendan's bike that was in the high 180s. So these are sort of smack bang in the middle with the weight, um, which is um, which is uh, which is good. Um, and but certainly they they do ride very light as well too. As we all know, there's there's riding weight and then there's um uh, there's actually the physical weight so yeah so it's smack bang in the middle between the sort of the, the dr650 and the earlier model 690s and probably i'd say if you bought a, a current model 690 and put the rado tower and tank on it in the rear rack you'd be probably pretty similar to this i think be, they'd be high 160s low 170s something along those lines and it does vary with your tires and your tubes and all that sort of stuff so it's only a, a bit of a rough science guys um comparing them to the to the dr the DR is the, a simpler bike again so it's a carby bike it's just oil cooled there's no radiators um, it's it's the simplest of the three bikes no traction control no ABS no ride mapping systems anything like that it is a two-seater you can take two people on it um, then you've got this obviously again this is this is a solo bike it's not a dual no no, no rear foot pegs you can't take a pillion pasture on this bike uh, but again, no ABS, no traction control, no ride modes, nothing like that. So next level, but it is a fuel-injected bike and it does have radiators and a water pump. And of course, the next level from there is the 690.701s where, uh, to their credit, they've created quite a, quite a light bike for, uh, for what they are. And you can take pillion passengers. Obviously, the later models, the 690 that I had, the 2018, had um, switchable ABS. You could dongle it out and that sort of stuff, which I did. But the later models have uh, lean-sensitive ABS, I think traction control and a couple other bits and pieces. I think I can't quite remember exactly what they came with now. But um, So, yeah, obviously this sits smack bang in the middle, but it does have a fuel pump. So canning stock route style rides where you're doing a 1,000 Ks, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, I probably will take a spare, a spare fuel pump, whereas on a DR650 you probably don't need to, you don't certainly take, take a spare pump, uh, spare uh, carby or anything like that. So they're a little bit simpler again but i do like this bike it's very easy to work on as is she starter motor spark plugs fuel pumps uh sorry um um water pumps are all very easy to get to even the fuel pump is actually just under the seat there very easy to get to i have pulled this bike down a couple of times now and it is very good very easy to work on um so who does this bike just out in the shed Saturday afternoon, just um, doing a little bit of work to the AJP. Um, wanted to take the tablet off and just update it, took it inside and um, uh, just updated it and updated the software and downloaded some maps of mine and bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just a little ISUS tablet and uh, works well. But um, while I've got it off, I've just had a look at the um, structure here. I realised that um, the structure of the tower here, that the actual tablet's fully adjustable. You can tilt it up and back and down and in and out. So pretty impressed with that and just impressed again with all the structure here and the detail, the attention to detail, all nicely anodized aluminium, all custom made plastics here, matching black screws. Yeah, just really good quality. Once again, impressed with the build of this bike. I'm, uh, I'm actually been um, taken aback a bit with the build quality. So yeah, anyway, we'll keep going. So who does this bike suit? Okay, um, if you... If you sort of want a versatile bike, this is probably not the choice because it's got the longer wheelbase, it's a little bit slower steering. This is a touring slash adventure bike. 
the 690s, the 701s, you might consider them a little bit more versatile and certainly the uh, DR650s, you might consider those more versatile as well. Particularly the DR650 with that shorter wheelbase and that quicker steering, um, you, you certainly could use those in a, you know, some pretty tight roads and pretty tight single trail if you wanted to, whereas these are probably a little bit more um, uh, more suited to um, touring, so to speak, with their longer, longer wheelbase and slower steering. Um, but this bike is not for everyone um if you like your bells and whistles if you like your you know your high-tech gear and all the latest stuff um this is not the bike for you this is deliberately a bike that's been kept pretty simple um and uh well as simple as it can be in 2023 that's for sure uh it's it's, it's um you know it's tr they're sort of targeted at a Oh God, I don't know what the word is. The person I'm looking for, it's sort of targeted at a um, you know the um, person that likes a simpler option. And certainly that's me. I, I don't want ABS. I don't want bloody traction control. I don't want any of that stuff. I don't want bloody stand bloody switches and all that stuff that goes wrong. I just want a nice simple bike. So the bike suits me down to the ground. It really does. It's just perfect for what I want to do. And so, yeah, it's not for everyone. If you like your bells and whistles and the latest technologies, go to the 69701. And uh, if you if you want real basic bikes and you you're not worried too much about performance, then you can think about a 650. And um, yeah, so yeah. But anyway, there you go, guys. That's uh, that's my thoughts on the bike. The only other probably the only other thing you could discuss is pricing. Of course, these are about. Um, 20 grand on the road i believe which is the same as the 690 701s but of course then you've got to spend about i think about five thousand dollars if you spent allowed five thousand dollars for a rack Rado tower extra tank they only come with a 13 litre tank the 690s um you um you know you, you're probably getting up around the 25 all set up with towers and a tablet and and uh, a bit of extra fuel range and and whatnot with the 690s uh, whereas this is obviously pretty well set up you just got to put a rear rack on them and away you go so to speak so uh, and of course the dr 650s are no longer in production so how do we price those they're the cheapest option even by paying good price for a low kilometer one they're still considerably cheaper you'll buy one for for a well under ten ten thousand dollars sort of thing so um yeah much cheaper again um i didn't pay anywhere near ten thousand dollars for this bike i've got a a, a, a bloke that uh, had ridden it quite um with a lot of um zest and a lot of um enthusiasm and then bought another bike and lost interest and so i just bought it out of his shed all dusty and dirty and and basically uh, cleaned her up and uh, she's been an absolute winner for me so very pleased but anyway guys i'm going to keep moving keep rolling and um we'll um we'll uh, keep clearing ahead and heading out of the bush and then i'll head home and it'll be beer o'clock in about half an hour i reckon or an hour maybe so anyway guys um that's my thoughts on the bike um I know there's op other options on the market, but certainly that's where I'm at with regard to adventure slash touring bikes. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll hope to see you out in the trail soon.